let's understand future methods in apex so this is the introduction of future apex so basically future apex runs process in a separate thread at a later time when system resources become available so basically a uh, future method or future apex is part of asynchronous processing so it runs in separate thread whenever required resources are available if you are implementing any future method in the future apex so you need to use this at the rate future annotation in synchronous processing all method calls are made from the same thread and no additional processing can occur until the process is complete but it is not true with the asynchronous so in case of a uh, future method method runs asynchronously in its own thread right so this is the basic difference between synchronous and asynchronous processing so this basically unblocks users from performing other operations so it also provides higher governor and ex execution limits for processing now when to use future methods so if you want to make callouts to external web services so in that case you can use future method so let's say you 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 are trying to make uh, callouts to external web service from trigger so you cannot do that in that case you need to call a future method through that trigger and uh, you need to set callouts equals to true so this is the first use case of a future method then you can process that needs to execute it in a separate or its own thread so uh, if you want to initiate a separate thread like if your process is taking longer to execute so you don't want to execute that uh, synchronously you want uh, that to be executed asynchronously in a separate thread so that you can uh, you can complete your synchronous process in timely manner so in that case also uh, you can use future method then if you want uh, to isolate dml operations on different s object types to prevent the mixed dml error so that also you can handle with the help of future methods so this is basic syntax of future apex you need to uh, define a class then add the rate future before the method this is the annotation and uh, here we can pass uh, primitive types or collection of primitives non primitives are not supported in future methods and then you can uh, query some records and you can apply the operations so let's jump into developer console and okay before implementing one use case i am just creating a field on account so basically i am going to create one method which will be calculating total number of contacts available under any account right so i am creating new field of type number so labeling it as number of contacts clicking on next visible to all the profiles next and save so field is created now i am doing a refresh so now i need to uh, create a class where i can implement the future method right so field is already available so it's time to create the class so i am labeling it as account calculator so here first i am writing annotation at the rate future then public static void count contacts and here i will be receiving list of ids and acc ids then i am creating list of account acc list equals to now we need to apply soql so whatever ids are available in this acc ids basis on that we will be applying the soql so select id and here i am going to apply parent to child soql so this is basically child relationship name so along with account all related contacts will be queried so 
So this is our SOQL, which will be having all the data uh, related to account and contacts. So information will be available into ACC list. Now I need to apply for each loop on ACC list. So ACC list will be iterated and one by one, each account information will be available into ACC. Now we need to apply ACC dot number of contacts equals to ACC dot contacts dot size. So here, what I did through this ACC, I am fetching this contacts, which is child relationship name. So it is having all the contacts associated to particular account and I'm calculating its size and calculated size will be stored in this field that I created earlier. And after that, I'm writing a date ACC list. Also, you can apply null check like if not ACC list is empty. So if list is not empty, then only update DML will be executed, right? Now, after writing this code, you need to jump into anonymous window from where you can create instance of this class where future method is available. And in later stage, like if you want to initiate this from any other class, so that is also possible. So getting list of account first. So I will be fetching some account records so that I can pass their IDs. So select ID from account limit five, then list of ID ACC ID is equals to new list of ID. Putting on this list of account list and ACC IDs dot add ACC dot ID. Now I'm going to call future method. So account calculator dot contacts and here I'm passing ACC IDs, right? So this way I first queried the accounts created uh, ID set and I'm passing those IDs into this method and that method will be querying account along with related contacts and uh, contact size will be stored in this field which is available on account, right? So now it's time to execute this. So I'm clicking on execute. It is executed. Now we need to test it whether it is executed or not. So you can search for Apex jobs. So whenever you initiate any asynchronous process, so that will be available here. So you can see uh, it is executed and Apex class name is available here. Method is available, right? And uh, this job is completed now. Uh, you can go and test uh, certain records. So uh, what you can do here, uh, you can apply system.debug so that you can know the IDs and uh, basis on that ID, like what account records are queried. You can go and check on the UI, like whether uh, total number of contacts are populated on account or not, right? So. Uh, this way, uh, I demonstrated you how you can implement future method and how you can call it. Now it's time to implement its test class so that we can ensure the code coverage as well. So I am creating one more class. So labeling it as account calculator test. At the rate is test annotation because it is required to make this class as test class, then whatever method we define, we need to use at the rate is test annotation there as well. So public static void count context test. And here we need to create data first. So creating ACC list equals to new list of account. So 
iterating on this list. So integer i equals to zero, i less than 250. So 250 records will be created. So here ACC list dot add new account name equals to test plus i. So account names will be uh, different because I am using test plus i. So i is changing every time. And uh, whatever account uh, instance will be created that will be added automatically to this list. And here I am writing insert ACC list. Right, then list of contact on list equals to new list of contact, then list of ID, ACC IDs. So, this list of ID will be storing or collecting all the IDs of count. Now, I am going to iterate on ACC list so that I can create related accounts. So on list dot add new contact. Here we need to fill last name. So let's fill first name as well. So first name equals to test. Or if you want to put account name like as first name or last name so that is also possible so uh, first name will be test and last name i'm going to set as acc dot name and to link this contact with account we need to populate account id field with acc dot id so this way account record is created it will be linked with the Sorry, contact is uh, contact instance is created and it will be linked with the account and uh, uh, we are adding that newly created instance into con list as well. And here in this ACC IDs, I am going to add ACC dot ID. So this way everything is created. Now we need to insert con list. Right, so con list is also inserted. So account is inserted, contact is inserted. Now it's time to call the method. So test dot start test. And here I'm going to write account calculator dot count contacts and we need to pass ACC IDs and then test dot stop test, right? So this way what will happen uh, this method will be executed and uh, um, the future method will be executed and uh, uh, context will be counted and the counted value will be placed on the account. So now after this, we need to apply uh, assertion. So I'm going to query accounts. So select ID, then number of context underscore underscore C from account. So we need to query this field because this field will be having some value after execution of that future method, right? So I'm querying all the accounts which we inserted here, right? Oh, I guess there is some error. Okay, I just forgot to write this, yeah. Now I'm applying system dot assert equals and one comma ACC's zero dot number of contacts underscore underscore C. So all the accounts will be available in this ACCs. And here you can see we are inserting one contact under one account, right? So here I'm comparing one with this ACC zero. So zero index account will be having only one contact in this field, like uh, counted value. So if both are matching, then this assert will pass, otherwise it will fail. So if it fails, so we can throw some message as well. So, Contacts are not counted. 
successfully. So this kind of error message will be displayed, right? So now I'm saving this test class. So at top right corner, you can see this run test button is available. So I'm opening this bar, moving to tests and clicking on run test. So test class is executing. So it is completed. And here you can see nothing is breaking, everything is passing. So we implemented one method and that is passing, right? Now it's time to check the code coverage. So you need to go to this class and here you can see uh, each line is covered properly. So 100% code coverage is there along with uh, whatever a session we implemented that is also passing. It means the code which we implemented is it is working fine. So this is all about how to implement future method and how to write test class for that, uh, for the class where future method is implemented.